Mr. Martin. Chairwoman Horn, Ranking Member Babin, and members of the subcommittee, over the past five years, the Office of Inspector General has issued 13 reports related to the International Space Station, including reviews of NASA's efforts to maximize onboard research, manage the $17 billion in contracts with private companies to fly cargo and crew, and maintain international partnerships that fund almost one quarter of the station's annual expenses. My testimony today is informed by these past reviews, in particular an audit we issued last July that assessed NASA's utilization of the ISS. For the past 21 years, the ISS has served as a unique platform for humans to experience living in space while conducting research in a microgravity environment. But while a unique platform, it's also an expensive platform that costs NASA between three to four billion dollars annually, or about half its human spaceflight budget. In my remarks this morning, I offer three observations based on our oversight work. Observation one, NASA's current plans for a more incremental approach to ISS commercialization appear more realistic than its previous approach that set a hard deadline of October 2025 to end direct federal funding for the station. That said, we continue to question whether a sufficient business case exists under which private companies can create a self-sustaining and profit-making business using the ISS independent of significant government funding in the short or midterm. From our perspective, it is unlikely that a private entity would assume the station's operating cost, currently $1.2 billion annually, to enable NASA to achieve its stated goal of, quote, becoming one of many customers of a commercial LEO platform. Observation two. Structurally, it appears the service life of the ISS could safely be extended to at least 2028, if not beyond. However, the larger challenge may be the yearly expense of our oper operating the station past 2024, an expense that may impact NASA's ability to fund other priorities. Unless the agency receives a substantial and sustained appropriations increase, it will be hard pressed to continue supporting ISS operations under its current model while also funding initiatives such as the Gateway, lunar landers, new spacesuits, and other technologies required for a moon landing. Observation three. Last month, NASA announced an interim directive outlining use of the ISS for commercial and marketing activities. To help companies develop business plans, NASA also published a pricing policy under which it plans to charge private astronauts around $1 million for a month-long stay on the ISS, or about $35,000 per day. While NASA acknowledges these prices are substantially subsidized and represent only a small portion of the agency's actual costs, the initiative is one approach NASA is undertaking to foster a commercial market in low Earth orbit. The likelihood of success of this effort remains unclear for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is uncertainty about when routine commercial crew flights to the ISS will begin and how much a seat will cost a private astronaut. In conclusion, one positive benefit of the administration's FY 2019 plan to end direct federal funding of the ISS after 2024 was that it helped focus the conversation about the station's future. Whether the final decision is extension, increased commercialization, retirement, or some combination of these options, the sooner the administration and Congress agree on a definitive path forward for the ISS, the better NASA will be able to maximize use of the station and make additional plans to commercialize low Earth orbit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martin.